Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We bless him today. Amen. He is faithful. Yes. Amen. Amen. As, as the song ministered Amen. to us over and over again, he will never fail. Amen. So I trust in God. He will Amen. never fail. Amen. Amen. Do, do we believe that today? Yes, Lord. Amen. So I thank you. Thank you all for being in your uh, in your right space today. Amen. Um, we know we got some some people that are that are out, and and that's okay. Amen. It's okay. They do what they do. Amen. Um, and we're glad they're doing what they do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we lift up those that, that couldn't be with us today. Amen. Amen. And so we honor God for their life. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So thank you, everyone that, that, that pitched in today. Amen. From the from the breakfast, amen, to the to the to the intercession, to prayer, dance, helps. You know, we, we even had our nurse. On, 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 on standby today to come on in and, and, and put our hands to the plow. So we appreciate you being in your being in your right place. Amen. Amen. I, I would tell you it's it's good to have a nurse on day. Yeah. You know. Amen. And so not that anybody passed out or whatever, but she was able to use some of them uh, them skills that she got. Amen. Amen. We didn't have nobody get sick, no. You know, so don't misunderstand. Yeah. But we bless God for. Amen. We Amen. bless God for Minister God. Amen. Come on on. Praise God. We appreciate your efforts. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you. Amen. Appreciate your evangelists. Amen. For exalting. Amen. And, and praying. Um, interceding. And so, and I bless God for each of you. Amen. Pastor Parker, even for praying this morning. Um, so again, we honor the Lord today. Amen. Everybody Amen. ready? Amen. Amen. And so, uh, for those that, 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 that may be unaware, amen, this is Apostle Chauncey Craig of Discipling Ministries. The place where we're not concerned about a building, but the building of a people. Yeah, and so uh, I started a series uh, some time back, um, and I, this is going to be part three of that, fulfilling the vision. And so I believe God had us uh, there to, 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 to remind us of the vision of the house. Um, because one thing about vision, if, 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 if there is no vision, um, we, we're, we're in trouble. Amen. Or we find ourselves all over the place. Um, and so what I mean by that and an example of that is that even even in our homes, um, sometimes we can say, hey, uh, we or we just I'll just I say our home and I'll just use our finances. We'll say, hey, we planning to do this. We planning to do that. And so we begin to uh, get ourselves together in, in, in hopes of, of what we are planning to do. Um, but then all of a sudden you see something else or something change or you, you, uh, something else happened and then we end up chasing that and then chasing this and then, and then chasing that and, chase, and then we never get to the thing that we really wanted to do because we, we end up chasing other stuff. Um, okay, let me, maybe that didn't help. You, I've been church uh, pretty much all my life and ever since I can remember, people had a building fund. How many buildings y'all see go up? <laughs> and so what happened is they lose sight of the vision. So much other stuff be going on. It's not like they didn't, they didn't mean to, but it just never happened. Amen? And so that's why DMI, we don't sell no fish sandwiches, we don't do no fun rate, we ain't doing nothing left. We're going to let the Lord do what he do. Amen. Amen. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to help us understand the purpose of having a vision. Amen. You want to see the vision fulfilled, right? Uh, amen. amen. And amen. so, even if he don't fulfill it through me, whoever comes up behind me can never can take up the reins to know what it is and keep moving. Everybody amen. understand? Amen. And so, we're talking about the vision, the vision of the house. Amen. And so, listen. Uh, our vision, Discipling Ministries Inc., is a Bible-based and spirit-filled interdenominational ministry. A spiritual boot camp geared towards these three E's to educate, to empower, and to encourage through a little humor, active participation, act exercising, practical teaching, and preaching of God's word. Equipping leaders to lead in every facet of ministry in this mission is plainly to build the people. 
We strive to prepare God's children to evangelize and take this gospel to the nation by knowing who you are and in whom you put your trust. Provide a loving family atmosphere conducive to learning. Embracing the fullness of joy while experiencing and being in the presence of the Lord. Allowing liberties to operate in God-given talents and abilities without the hindrance of man's denomination, doctrine, or traditionalism. To reach and restore the wounded, unchurched, abused, battered, forgotten, and the backslider. Whosoever will, let them come. Yeah. Operate outside the norm in the four walls of this ministry in kingdom building. Determined not to be a mere social club, but pursuing that not one should be lost, for every soul does matter. We admit and make ourselves vulnerable, for we believe in being led by the Spirit of God, which rarely, if ever, agrees with the flesh. We take extra precaution that we never get too big to serve someone else or forget to love them regardless of the circumstances. Amen? Everybody got it? Amen. Hallelujah. And this is our vision. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for our vision. Amen. Good. Wait a minute. I don't know if I want to clap or not. Wait a minute. I heard it. <laughs> but I ain't sure. Amen. And so this is our vision. And so uh, I believe this, 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 we're going we're gonna to wrap this up today. Amen. Uh, the Lord say the same. But uh, what I want to do is I want to drop down to, um, I believe we left off with that last sentence in that first paragraph where it says, we strive uh, to prepare God's children to evangelize and take this gospel to the nation by knowing who you are and in whom you put your trust. Amen. And so the thing that I, that, that I want to remind us again is that that word strive, that word means to contend, to fight, to struggle, to dispute, to judge, all that. And so what it's telling us is this it's, it's a hard thing, especially when you're interdenominational, when you enter it again, people coming from all different walks of life. And so, you know, that's that's why, <clears throat> excuse me, certain people may look for a Baptist ministry or a non-denominational ministry, which. It's not really, uh, well, I, I just say it can go a lot of different directions, not non-denominational, but whether it's Church of God or Church of God in Christ or Methodist or whatever, oftentimes the, the methodologies or, or the terminologies is the same. And so that's why they look for those similar similar type ministries because of what they what they know. Okay, but 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 for us, amen, we, we, we don't want to get caught up in systems. We don't want to get caught up in a certain methodology we don't want to get we, we want free course for the lord to do what he wants to do amen? amen and so because again if you don't you'll end up chasing rabbits just like i just like i said about a vision you'll end up finding yourself all over the place amen if you don't stay uh if you don't allow god to be god amen, amen. and so um uh, because again sometimes you can be doing a lot of good work and it not be god work and so we want God to be in charge. We want to do what God would have us to do. Amen. amen. Somebody say fulfilling the vision. Fulfilling the vision. And so it's hard. Amen. It's, it's a struggle. It's a fight to prepare God's, God, God, God's children for this. Because people uh, like to be what they're used to. They want to go by what they know. They want to go by what they feel. They want to go by this is how I was raised. This is what. And so it's hard. That's why we strive to prepare. We contend. We fight to prepare. All right. And so again, it goes on to say God's children to evangelize. And, I, and I, I talked about this a little bit, that word evangelize meaning for, you know, for us to fulfill our call. And then I told us is that, that it said uh, that the, uh, evangelize, the Greek word for that is gospeline. Everybody remember that? Gospeline. And in essence, it's for us to go spell, go gospeline, to go spell it out. That's that's our job. We're we're to go spell it out. We're to go share it with other people. We're, we we should be able to uh, at some point be able to teach and share the gospel. If and again, even if we can't share it, even if we don't know all the scripture, we should at least and minimally be able to provide our testimony. Amen. 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 I hope that's making sense to us. Hallelujah. Amen. And so again, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And so uh, uh, evangelize, gospeling. And take this gospel to the nation by knowing who you are and in whom you put your trust. And so most of us would say, well, I know who I am. I know who I am. Jesus. 
And we may feel like we do. We may feel like we do. And so, but the truth is, until I know in whom I put my trust, <laughs> I'll never know who I am. There you go. Hallelujah. And so, I'm going to read it again. And take this gospel to the nation by knowing who you are and in whom you put your trust. Because again, we can't know who we are until we know in whom we put our trust. And why would I say such a thing? Because it's not important who you are. What's more important is who he is in you. Because it's not about you. Know ye that your body is the temple of God. And if God lives in the temple, who has free reign to do what he want to do? He does. He's the landlord. Amen. He's the landlord. He's over this. And so it, it, it depends on what he wants to do in me. And so because I put my trust in him, now I know who's working inside of me. And so whatever, whatever I'm doing, whoever I am, is who God says I am. Amen. Everybody understand? Yeah, Lord. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. Yeah. Amen. If, 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 if we lead not into our own understanding, but in all our ways, yeah. Yeah. acknowledge Him, He'll do what? Yeah. Yeah. He'll direct our path. Right. And so if it's Him yeah. that's doing the directing, if Him that's doing the leading, if it's Him, and so it's not about, it's not really about who I am, it's about who He is. In me and what he wants to use me for. Amen? Amen. But if it was all about who I am, that'll limit me. Yeah. Because, again, one of the things that we heard on, I, I believe it was last week, amen, uh, Evangelist was talking, uh, I, I, guess, I think it was on Wednesday night, and, 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 and she, she, she was sharing with Miss Jeannie that she has the ability to flow um, in whatever gift. That, that, she can, that she can move in whatever gift. But how could she do that if it wasn't for God moving? Amen. 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 If it wasn't for God doing what he do, she would limit herself to, well, I'm help and I'm dance. You understand what I'm saying? Well, I sing, well, I do this. But you can move in, in anything. However God, God wants to lead us. And so, therefore, it's more important about who he is or in whom we put our trust. Amen. Then it is about who I am. Amen. Amen. Make sense. All right. I hope that's making sense to us. All right. And so let's get to this next part. Amen. Uh, and so that next part, it says providing a loving family atmosphere conducive to learning. Once again, provide a loving family atmosphere. So when we say provide a loving family, a loving family, and so it's, it's important for us, amen, as a ministry, as, as discipling ministries, amen, to, be, to, to provide a loving family atmosphere, a loving family atmosphere. Again, that's why we don't say, um, welcome to church. <laughs> But it's welcome to ministry, amen? Or, or, and it says on the outside, you know, welcome to discipling ministries. And so it's about the ministries, amen? It's not about the church. It's not about the wall. And so because ministry, amen, this, where does ministry start at? Somebody say at home. At home. Amen? Ministry start at home. Remember, Amen. Acts when 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 they when when they came out the upper you know or or uh even before before they went in he says you gonna be you gonna be witnesses of me where in Jerusalem and then where Judea and then Samaria but where were they at somebody say in Jerusalem <laughs> Amen and so in other words they was at home so ministry starts. At home. Yeah. Your first ministry is at home. home. And so home represents what? <laughs> family. That's our family. That's ministry. And so that's why we say a loving family atmosphere. This ministry starts right here. Ministry, you know, and even before you get here, you should be doing ministry at your home. Amen. And so when you come into this home, amen, this is still 
family. Amen. This in reach. This in reach, not outreach. This in. Because we're family. We're, we're inside. Everybody understand? All right. So provide a loving family atmosphere. Amen. And that's why we say, hey, when you come to Christ or when you yoke up with the ministry, we don't just want you to church. We want to do life with you. We, we want us to be family. Amen. If you're going through, I'm going through. Amen. A loving family atmosphere. Amen. Why? If I had to. I don't know. But if, if it's something I had to lift. And I like to think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty strong. I, I, you know, I, I like to think I can handle my own. But why would I use all my strength if I got Q, Eugene, Brasetti? Can't we share this load? Amen. Wouldn't it be so much easier to share the load? Amen. That's what families do. Amen. Families share the load. Amen. Amen. And so a loving family atmosphere. Amen. And so again, we want to do life with you. And so this loving family atmosphere, when it's loving, when it's family, this atmosphere, it makes it conducive to what? Learning. Conducive to learning. And when you look at that word conducive, that word simply means making a situation or outcome likely. And so we say an atmosphere conducive to learning. We want the atmosphere, amen, to be set. We want the atmosphere to be likely where you can receive something. Because again, listen, if we come, one of the things that happens is, again, we want, we want, we want, we want us to learn. So a loving family atmosphere conducive to learning. We want us to learn, to learn, to learn, to learn. And so we have to till the ground. We have to, the atmosphere has to be right. For learning. Amen. amen. Because amen. again, sometimes, amen, uh, uh, and I'm just saying, even, even for our children, when they come home, we say, hey, I need you to do, I want you to do your homework. Amen. I expect you to do this. I expect you to do that. I expect you to do, and turn that TV off. <laughs> amen. Uh, put that game down. Or whatever. We, 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 in other words, we want the, we want the atmosphere to be right for learning. So put some stuff aside. And so when we come in, we want us to, to, to put some stuff aside, amen. We want the atmosphere to be right for learning. And so here's, that's why sometimes there's a little humor, amen. At the same time, um, to know that you're learning, that's why at the end we ask, what are your questions, what are your comments, what are, to hear what you learn. Everybody get it? Ugh. Amen. So conducive to learning. Now. When you hear the word learning, can anybody tell me what 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 is it? What give, give me one word that comes to comes to mind when you hear the word learning? Anybody? Reading, study, study, reading, meditation, teaching. Amen. And so here's some things we heard: meditation, we heard reading. Um, but that word learning means instruction. Instruction, because how you gonna learn if there's no, if there's no instruction, right? But guess what? It also means writing. Writing. And so I used to tell us all the time, make sure when, when you come, make sure you bring something to write with and something to write on. I can't make you. Amen. But if you bring something to write with and something to write on, listen, I'm telling you, I have, I've been in this thing since October of 97. And I can't tell you how many notebooks, cards, and stuff that I have throughout the years. I can probably go in my office, go in my office right now and, put, and show you some stuff that probably came from years and years ago. I'm talking about even where I was just writing notes or where I would just call myself talking to the Lord or just writing scriptures or, or whatever. And so what I'm telling you is every now and then I find something I'll be like, that was good. Or I can use this. Or man, he said that way back when. And it's going on now. I mean, stuff like that. And so it's important to write. It's important to take notes. It's important to hear. All right? And so again, that word learning, it means instruction, writing. It also means education. It means discipline. The word learning, instruction, writing, education, discipline. 
Discipline. So let's put it together. Provide a loving family atmosphere conducive to learning. Amen? Or conducive to discipline. Conducive to instruction. Conducive to writing. Conducive to being educated. Now, why is this important? If we are indeed going to be disciples of Christ and we're unlearned, guess how we're going to govern ourselves? Ignorantly. Because we're unlearned. And so hence, that's why we're learning. That's why we're hearing the word of God. We ain't all over the place. We ain't jumping over here. And I'm telling you, uh, you'll notice one, one of my pet peeves, and, 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 and it's a pet peeve because I believe God built me this way. Amen. Not just because it's personal, but I believe this, this is, this. if we're going to use scripture, stick with the scripture. You ain't, scripture support itself. You ain't got to run over here. You ain't got to run over there, run over there. Well, run all the way over here, run over you know, and every now and then, you may, it's okay to say, okay, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you. But if, but you don't have to make the case for the text. The text is what it is. We'll talk about that another time. I guess I, I, I got a couple of, huh? I got, uh, I feel it. Amen. But the scripture stands on its own. Amen. We ain't got to run, chase this, chase that. Well, whatever it is, if we use it in context, it'll stand on its own. But if you don't know the context, then you may want to hear, well, yeah, it said it right here. Oh, 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 it's way over here. Oh, it's, they ain't even the same context. Just the same word. Amen? Amen. All right. Anyway, back to this. <laughs> but that's why we got to learn. Hallelujah. That's why we got to learn. Amen? Again, and it says, embracing the fullness of joy. Embracing the fullness of joy. Can anybody tell me why they think it's important to embrace the fullness of joy? All right, I'm going to tell you. Amen. The fullness of joy. The fullness of joy. It says this. Listen. The fullness of joy. It means that whatever, when I'm walking and I'm functioning and I'm embracing the fullness of joy, I'm able to come to you just like I am right now. But guess what? My mama going through. <laughs> Mama's in the hospital. My, my, mama got this going. It's, uh, uh, this situation is around me. This, and so for some people, they can't do what God tells them to do because of everything else that's going on. Mm -hmm. But when you embrace the fullness of joy, it outweighs everything else that's going on in my life. Because I choose to walk in the fullness of joy. I choose to embrace the fullness of joy. Everybody understanding what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. And so providing a loving family atmosphere, conducive to learning, embracing the fullness of joy. And so if I'm embracing the fullness of joy, guess what? That even makes it easier to learn. Because now I can get my mind off of whatever I'm dealing with. I can get my mind off of the situation that happened last week. I can get my mind off the situation that happened, whatever, because I'm embracing the fullness of joy. And so now because I'm embracing it, I'm open to learning. I'm open to receiving. But if I still got this situation on my mind, it's kind of hard to move. It's kind of hard to really receive the word of God. Everybody understand? Yeah. That's why we have to embrace the fullness of joy. But notice, I, but notice, and, and this word is strategic, fullness of joy. It didn't say embrace a portion of joy. It didn't say a half tank of joy. But the fullness of joy. Amen? Why? Because a half tank, if I, if I, if I embrace a half tank of joy, and I say I'm ready to receive, then all of a sudden my mind think on whatever with the portion that's with the other half that ain't filled. And so now I'm split between whatever, the, what was going on in the fullness of joy. But if I embrace the fullness of joy, then everything else is pushed to the bottom. Is this making sense? I hope it's making sense. Amen. And so that's why it's important to embrace the fullness of joy. Why? Because again, it outweighs everything else I'm dealing with. Yeah. 
I don't know what's going on in your life. Well, I'm in pain. Well, I'm thinking about this. Well, I got this going on. And so it's hard for me to really pay attention. I, and then, embrace the fullness of joy. Embrace the fullness of joy. Why? What does that song say? I found joy at the river that the Lord God gave to me. Amen. I found joy. Yeah. Amen. My, okay. This joy I have. The word ain't give it to me in the world. But if I'm if I'm if I got a pain over here, if I got a I'm allowing the effects of the world to cause me to But that's why I gotta embrace the fullness of joy. And it don't mean that you're not going through. It don't mean that you're not that you don't have some aches and pain. It don't mean that you're not that you're not dealing with some stuff. But by choice, I've made up my mind to embrace the fullness of of joy. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope that makes sense to us. Amen. And so it goes on to say, uh, embrace the fullness of joy while experiencing and being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And so what are we talking about today? Somebody say fulfilling the vision. Fulfilling the vision. Fulfilling the vision. And so I think we, my fact, we talked about this a little bit on Wednesday night. When you see the word, the presence of the Lord, amen, what's a, what's a, one, a, 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 a one word we can use for the presence of the Lord? Brother said, Anointing. Anointing, there it is. Look at it, look at it. He's like, let me think about it. <laughs> there, there, there you go, amen. But the same thing, the anointing, the presence of the Lord. That's, it's, it's the anointing. And so let's look at it again. Embracing the fullness of joy while experiencing and being under the anointing or in the anointing. Amen. Because again, the presence of the Lord is so, listen, I can't have full, fullness of joy if God ain't present. Amen. I can't have fullness of joy if, if, if I don't choose. Amen. Uh, the song said, I trust in God. <laughs> Because I trust in him, because, because I believe in him, amen, I can receive the fullness of joy. And because I receive the fullness of joy, I had to receive it because he was present. Amen. I had to receive it because I know he's here. Again, he already told us that he would never leave us nor forsake. And so since God is present, amen, and since the, since the presence of God is there, that means the anointing is there. Amen. Because it. The anointing is the presence of God. Yeah. And the anointing is able to remove some stuff. The anointing is able to break some stuff. The anointing is able to shift some stuff. And so since, since the anointing know how to compartmentalize and break some stuff up and, and pluck up and root up, amen, all I got to do is embrace the fullness of joy and let, and let, and let, the, let the anointing do what he do. Everybody, everybody understand me? Because listen, why is that important? Because whatever you're dealing with, if you could fix it, you would have fixed it already. <laughs> so I need you, Lord. I trust in God. Amen. 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 The Savior. One. This, this one. The one. Amen. I hope that makes sense. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, while being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. While experiencing in being in the presence of the Lord. All right? That next part says, allowing liberties, allowing liberties to operate in God-given talents and abilities. Once again, allowing liberties to operate in God-given talents and abilities. And so, it's important for me, amen? And, and, and why it's important for me, because I'm the one that wrote the vision. Amen. I wrote what I believe God gave me. Amen. And so, allowing liberties to operate in God-given talents and abilities. Okay? And so, listen. Q went to, uh, well, our youngest son, he went to John Harden. And I'm telling you, um, uh, 2008, 9, 10, 11. Every year, they were really good in football. 
every year. Really good. Really good. Really good. A lot of talent. A lot of talent. I'm talking a lot of talent. Can I say it again? A lot of talent. But he ain't got no state championship. And here, here's what I would tell you. One of my arguments, and because I was present, my argument, and, and I, I stand by to this day, is that it's one thing to coach players. And it's another thing to coach talent. And so what happens is when people are talented, we say, go, just go do it. But no, 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 no. You still got to coach the talent. You still got to make sure when you, when you put this stuff together that, that, that you got the right pieces and you're still coaching them. You're still holding them accountable or whatever. You, even though you're talented, even though you're gifted, you still got to be coached. But again, some people take a hands-off approach cause and, and just say, hey, go make it happen. Go make it happen. Go do what you do. And so you can have you will have minimal success without coaching. Think about it. NBA players, them guys have played some most of them practically their entire life leading up to getting into the NBA. You would think if they spent all that time, all those years, training, talented, gifted, they wouldn't need, they should need no coach. They should be like the rec center. Next five, who up? And everybody know what to do. But that's not how it works. They gotta be coached. They still gotta be coached. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? You, they still need coaching. Even though they're gifted and talented. And so what, what, why is this important to us? The thing I'm trying, I'm trying to help us understand is allowing liberties to operate in God-given talents and ability. But it don't mean that you ain't going to be coached. Amen. It ain't going to mean that you're not going to get up. Amen. Everybody, and if you if, if you knew here, you don't know when I when I look at you, I try to make eye contact. I do, Amen. I mean, I'm, trying, I'm probably trying, trying to get your attention and, and trying to tell you either to what, what I need you to do. Amen. In other words, I'm trying to coach you. So don't get upset. I'm allowing liberty. I'm, I'm allowing you to do what you got to do. But I'm going to coach you. I, we ain't going to just do it, anything and everything. Everybody ain't just free to just run. Uh, why I just feel like running around, you know, and tagging somebody there? Now, if it's in the floor with the servant, by all means, run on. But if you hear, amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm probably trying to get your attention. Amen. Make sense? Amen. All right. Why? We need coaching. We need coaching. All of us. All of us. Amen. I promise you, to this day, if it's something I'm dealing with, if, even if it's a scripture, if it's a, a something. Hey, Apostle Moore, what you, what, you, what you think about this? This, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. I'm accountable too. Amen. And I choose to be. Yes. Choose to be. Yes. Yes. Choose to be accountable to somebody. And so what I'm telling us is we're gonna we're gonna be coached. Now you're gonna be coached. But I'm we're gonna allow your liberties. We're gonna allow you to function. That's why it's discipling ministry. Bring your ministry. Bring it. Come on. But if you sing, I say put that. Hey, hey, listen, 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 listen. Cut that music off. I want to hear your acapella. I want I want to hear you sing out your belly. Okay, that's enough of that. That's what I mean. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to coach you. Amen. And the righteous cat. Hallelujah. Amen. The cat. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But I'm trying to coach. I'm trying to coach. I'm trying to coach. I'm trying to coach. Amen. Listen. Allowing liberties to operate in God given talents and abilities without the hindrance of man's denomination, doctrine, or traditionalism. Okay? And so, allowing liberties to operate in your God-given talents and abilities without the hindrance of man's denomination. Because again, what happens is, in our denomination, we decide, okay, this is what we believe, this is, this is how it's going to be, and so these are the things you need to govern yourself according to these rules. I don't have no rules. Amen? I just want you to hear God. 
I want you to move how how how, how God is is, is 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 telling you to move. And see, but sometimes, Amen. We confuse us mm -hmm. with what God is doing. Amen. Well, I just want to say, no, I don't need you to say what God saying. Amen. We, 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 you can tell what you need to say at another part in the service. But right now, we, what is God saying? Okay. Now, but under you know again, but when when you up under certain you know denominations, Amen. There are systems. There's there, there, there are certain, you know, like today being first Sunday. Amen. Y'all know we're supposed to do communion. We ain't doing communion today. Amen. <laughs> I'm just saying, certain stuff will have us systematic. Yes. Yes. Amen. But that's not what we're doing. Amen. We ain't moving like that. So again. God-given talents and abilities without the hindrance of man's denomination, doctrine, or traditionalism. And so, again, there are some things that, that we call uh, doctrine which are not necessarily according to the word of God. It's, it's stuff that, we, that, we, that, we, that, that we've collected and we say, hey, th basically this is the robber's rule, 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 rule and order, <laughs> amen, for how we're going to do ministry. This is the wrong rule of order, but no, 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 no. This, that's not how we, we're not functioning like that. We, we want the Holy Ghost to have free course. Amen? And so again, I'm not going to limit your gifts and talents based on the denomination or based on, amen, a, a doctrine or what our traditions are. Because we ain't got no tradition. Amen? Our tradition is we don't have none. That's our tradition. Amen? It's just making sense to everybody. Amen. I see, brother, brother Terry. I got, you got, I got a smile from you back there. You, 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 you all right? Good. Amen. <laughs> Fulfilling the vision. Fulfilling the vision. Amen. And so again, it's not a. We want you to function in your God-given talents and abilities. Whatever, whatever. Listen, some things, some things God has gifted you with, and there are some things that you worked on. There are some things that you 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 just got to a place where you just you just pretty good at that, amen. And that doesn't mean that God didn't gift you with that either. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying some some stuff we just we just good at. I, I think I gave an example um, some time back about evangelism when I was talking about how I was getting ready, you know, to position her or whatever until I heard otherwise, amen. But I was working off her talent instead of what her gifting is. And so when I heard it, no, this is the direction we're going with that. Amen. And so what I'm saying is, again, we're going to let you move. I'm going to let you move. I'm not going to micromanage, but trust me, I'm watching. I'm observing. I am listening, listening real good. Amen. And so every now and then you probably, I need you to fix that. Don't do that. Do, do, do. No, do it like you may want to consider doing it like this or consider this when you're doing that. Amen? Why? We need coaching. Amen? I hope we all understand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, but that but that coaching ain't got nothing to do with denomination, doctrine, or tradition. It's just that when we observe Christ and his disciples, his disciples were under him and he, 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 you know, they will follow him and, you know, they would, ask, they would ask questions and he would answer their questions. He would be like, okay, yeah, this, this, this. Or if they needed correction, he was like, oh, you of little faith, you know, how many times I got to tell you this right here, this right, you know, but don't be offended. Don't be offended. Just observe. Amen. And do and do do what needs to be done. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I'm not saying I'm Jesus, but I'm just, I'm just saying you got you got a coach. That ain't with him. I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Amen. You do have a coach. Amen. And we're trying to coach you. Hallelujah. Now, matter of fact, while I'm there, I also need us to understand this. There are some things that are specifically on my shoulders. There are some other, there are some things that are shared responsibilities as far as coaching. 
Amen. And up now again, there are some things specific to my shoulders. But it, it that, but there's some other things. Evangelist, Pastor Parker, yeah. Pastor Fleming, Amen, the prophet, that they may that. So if 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 they make a correction, if they don't let my voice be the only voice that you feel that you feel that's important or that you can hear from. Because you 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 are hinder yourself, yeah. Amen. This is this this is shared. This is the vision belongs to all of us, Amen. Amen. But the vision is enforced by a few of us. If you understand what I'm saying, I hope that makes sense to you. All right. So again, my voice shouldn't be the only voice that you think is relevant. That's not how this works. Hey man, I couldn't do this by myself. That's why we got other leaders. Remember Moses? He told me, "Hey, call them other elders. They get to, to help them manage." To help them. <laughs> anyway, uh, fulfilling the vision, fulfilling the vision. All right. It says to reach and restore the wounded. To reach and restore the wounded. To reach and restore the wounded. Amen. And so what happens is that that there are a when you begin to know in whom you put your trust, when you begin to allow the Lord to move you and lead you and guide you, you will come across some folk. Not just, I ain't just talking about in the building, but you're going to come across some folk. And some folk are wounded. And so one of, one, one of the things they teach in the military is to know the, 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 the life-saving the, the life, uh, life measures. And what they call life, life, life-saving steps. Life saving step. Amen. And so when people are wounded, we got to know the life saving, the life saving step. But, you know, we can't just be walking up to them. If you just would have gave your tithes and offering, you wouldn't be going through that. that. That's not life saving measure. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, should we be doing those things? Yes. For those that know. Now, for those that don't know, amen, for those that don't know, we understand. We're going, but that's why we're trying to teach. But, but the point is, amen, we should be using some life-saving steps. Amen. We need to be able to observe. We need, we, we need to be able to check people out, see where they're really bleeding from. Amen. But even before you get to the bleeding, you got to make sure they, they're at least breathing. What good is treating a wound if they ain't breathing? Amen. So we got to clear the airway. We got to make sure, okay, what's causing you to choke? Amen. Is it a chicken bone? <laughs> Amen. But we got to clear the airway. And so once we know you breathe, the people are breathing, then we get into treating the wounds and whatever. But I got to first get you breathing. Amen. And so sometimes, amen, listen, people are wounded. And so sometimes, amen, it's, again, people... Even for, for us, like, like I say, it, it ain't been so bad lately since, since I didn't realize it, but our, our, our phone, <laughs> we got an answer machine out front. Amen. Uh, it's not there right now, but we used to have an answer machine right behind, right behind us. And I didn't realize that for whatever Spectrum did, that the answer machine stopped picking up. It would still ring, but the answer, answering part wouldn't, wouldn't click in. And so... And again, I ain't chasing no rabbit. I just, I just, y'all feel me for a minute. We used to get messages all the time about people won't help. <laughs> but I was like, man, what's going on? I finally just, man, what's going on? And what's going on with the answer machine? And that's how I found out that, that, that it wouldn't pick up. And so it's because we, we weren't getting all them calls like we used to get. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to get a lot of calls about people won't help or people want something. Want something. Amen. And so what I'm saying is, uh, when we do get those calls, or we do need to, uh, or somebody get in contact with us and need help, we can't just crush people. We can't just crush them. Amen. We can't just crush them. And so sometimes, amen, okay, what's the problem? And so we hear the problem, we diagnose. Uh, in other words, we triage. And then when they do it, you go to the hospital, they triage. They go, we want to triage. See, see, see what's going on. See what's happening. Amen. And once we see what's happening, then 
we can minister to them. And sometimes our, our ministry to them, amen, uh, is not to crush them. Some things we can do, some things, some, some things we just ain't going to do. You understand what I'm saying? But if you hungry, we'll feed you. We'll feed you. Amen. Now that's one thing we, that we will do. We will feed you. But we ain't going to always pay your light bill. We ain't going to always take your grocery shop. Have we done that? Oh yeah. Have, 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 we, have, we, have we done people mortgage? Yes. Car payments? Yes. Uh, payday loans? <laughs> to get people out of trouble? We've done a lot. Amen. But the point that I'm making is we don't just crush people. We got to at least fix the wound. All right? And so again, to help the wound, we got people in finance. Hey, listen, we'll give you a class. We're gonna take care of it, but you you got you got you gotta commit. You gotta commit to going to this class. You got you gotta commit to this. You, you need to do this, you need to do and so but people, but people out there don't want to do that, then you really don't need no help. Because you ain't trying to get better. Because there, there, there's something that caused you to get right here. Now sometimes stuff happens. Sometimes stuff happens. But the point is, again. Fulfilling the vision. I just want to help us right there. Amen. And so I felt the need to understand what I'm talking about when I say the wounded. People are wounded. So we got to treat the wound. Treat the wound. All right. Amen. And so treating the wound don't always mean. The Bible say you got to be over here. And the Bible say, the Bible say you got to. No, we got, we got to hear people. Have a heart. Make sense? All right. All right. Uh, the unchurched. Because, again, everybody ain't been church. Everybody ain't been church. So we got to reach and restore the unchurched. So you got to reach them. But before you came to Christ, if every time somebody came to you, they was talking about, the Bible says, well, you got it. Well, the God You'd be like, you don't wait here with all that now. Go on. Get, come on, man. It, it, okay, so it ain't just me. Go on now. And so we got to understand, everybody ain't church. And even for those that, some, some that have been church, they still don't want to hear all that. And so we got to be able to, to meet people where they are. Amen? So we got to be, again, and so it says to reach and restore the wounded, the unchurched, even the abused. Right? The abused. And so one of the things that I, I thought I needed to make uh, 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 emphasis on you see the word abused, and then you see the word battered. Everybody see that? Amen. Abused, battered. Because, and, 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 and the emphasis is this. Abused can be just how somebody, someone treats you. But battered means you've been handled a certain way physically. Okay? And so there's a difference between abused and battered. Matter of fact, a, a, a battered would probably be somewhere like violent <laughs> or violence. But, again, there's a difference. And so sometimes, hey man, people have just had words put on them. People have, have been abused verbally. They've been a, a, a abused by people's actions. But battered means they actually been physically handled. Everybody understand? And so we got to be able to reach those people. Hey Amen. Also, the forgotten and the backslider. And so, believe it or not, some people feel forgotten. One of the things that I learned early on when I, when I first got to Kentucky, there are some remote places in Hardin County. Some really remote places. We were doing, uh, uh, we were passing out backpacks. Amen. Uh, that's before backpacks got real popular. Amen. Because next thing you know, everybody doing backpacks. Okay. But I'm like, my God. Anyway, I'm in some groups and some, a lot of backpacks. Amen. But we were doing backpack. And we was going off into some back little areas, man. I'm, I'm like, I would have never known this was here. Never. Matter of fact, I go so far as to tell you, parents, that's hard to count. You ever wonder why it seemed like, okay, on real heavy rain days or when it's really not a whole lot of snow, you're like, why they out of school? The roads ain't bad, eh? But in them remote areas, them buses can't get back up in there. 
And so school is closed because they can't get them feet. So it ain't about what you see out here, but I'm telling you, it's some, it's some places back off in there. And so what, what, what I'm trying to tell you, those, a lot of those people feel forgotten because they're not even part of the real, listen, I know an area here in Kentucky where they literally, a family, ain't no doors on the house, ain't no windows in the place they live. And to keep warm, they burn tires. Tires. That's toxic. But they burn tires to keep warm. What am I trying to say? I'm just trying to tell us there's some people that feel forgotten. Amen. Like they lost. They ain't even part of the same stuff that we living in. They don't have they don't they, they don't have the same advantages or whatever. And so even so, so on your worst day, just know it's somebody worse. Now that should make you happy. Amen. But I'm just telling you, you really ain't having a bad day. Everybody understanding what I'm saying? Got and so there's some people that feel forgotten. And so we got we got to be able to to reach them. I'm not saying that it, you know every every chance we get we go in and run off in the woods and see what these people. No 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 no. That's that's not what I'm getting at. That ain't what I'm getting at. Because again, yes sir. And even then you got to be careful how you go out there. Because there's those folk out there with them shotgun that when you come there they think you come. To this the is area. true. <laughs> this is true. Yes sir. Yes, sir. Very much so. Very much so. But my thing is, I don't, I don't believe in putting a band-aid on something that needs stitches. You understand what I'm saying? And so we ain't in a position to provide stitches. Everybody get what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So. But that's part of our vision, amen, to reach and restore the wounded, unchurched, abused, battered, forgotten, and the backslider. Whosoever will, let them come, all right? Now, the next part says, operate outside the norm. Operate outside the norm. And so as a ministry, again, we want to operate outside the norm. How do I reach and restore the wounded, the unchurched, or whatever? How do I do all that? And that's by operating outside of the norm. Operating outside of the norm. Why? Because even when you look at the word norm, that word means the usual way or the typical way. The usual way. Okay, so what's the usual way? The usual way is I come in, I, 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 I give what I give, I hear a song, I clap, amen, I cry a little bit, I shout or whatever, and then I go back out and, and I go on about my, my, my day. But if I was to ask the question, have you led anyone to Christ? And if that's not your story, not everybody has. But are you the person that somebody know they can call when they need some spiritual advice? When they need someone that can get a prayer through? When they need someone that can... And so if not, then we're just being normal. We're just being normal. Call my pastor. Amen. Call the, call the pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. And so again, but our job, again, is to operate outside the norm. Operate outside of the what's typical. Amen. In the four walls of the ministry. How do we operate outside the four walls of the ministry? Amen. Because, again, people need to be able to hear us. People need to be able to witness that we really are who we say we are. That God is really working in my life. Because if people see it, they'll be drawn to your light. That's the, the, again, that's why he calls us the salt of the earth. We're supposed to add some flavor wherever we go. Amen. People, pe people, need, people want salt on their life. And so again, the question is, who calls you when they need to get a prayer to? Who calls you and say, pray for me? Who calls you and say, hey, can you meet me? I just, I just need to see you. Just, just your presence made me feel so much. 
And so what I'm saying is, if, if this stuff is, if these kind of things, if we've been in Christ for any for, for a length of time and we and none of this stuff is happening around us, something's wrong. You got that right. Something's wrong. Amen. And so that means if, 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 if what's wrong is we still operate in the norm. We still operate in what's typical, what's usual. I go to church. <laughs> yeah, you go to church. What else? Amen? All right? Uh, listen. It's easy. One of the things I told us before. It's easy to be light when you're around other light. But when you get around some darkness, can you still be light? Because what happens is, okay, we say we light when we're, when we're around, around the other light. I'm, I'm, I'm light. I'm light. I'm light. I'm light. I'm with other light. But then when we get around our friends or people that's not walking in the light, if they cussing, we cussing. If they jumping around, we jumping around. Why? We want to fit in. Everybody understand? And so, and so that's why we can't... I'm going to read it again. Operate outside the norm in the four walls of this ministry. And so, again, it's bigger than how we function in here. Amen? Now, most of us wouldn't come up, come up in here and, as, as they say, turn up or put, or, or put our butt in the air and dance. And, and, uh. But when we get around our friends or when we get around darkness, that's what we go back to because we are no longer with the light. And so, but we're supposed to be light. We're supposed to be salt wherever we go. But some of us turn to pepper. No, you're supposed to be salt. It's because again, we're not in here all the time. More of your life is spent out there. And so out there, we're supposed to we're supposed to still be soft. And so we come up here, we come in here to get this instruction. We come up in here to be taught. We come up in here to learn. We get all this. We get all this. We get all this. And guess what? The scriptures say, by you know, uh, uh, by now all of you should be teaching. <laughs> by now. Anyway, back to the scripture. Amen. Operate outside the norm in the four walls of this ministry in what? Kingdom building. In kingdom building. And so in kingdom building, that's exactly what it alludes to. What it alludes to is if I'm the salt and I'm seasoning my brothers and sisters, if I'm seasoning my neighbor, if I'm seasoning whatever with this salt that I have, guess what it's doing? It's kingdom building. As you say, it's changing them. It's kingdom building. And so, in other words, you're building the kingdom of God. You're increasing the kingdom of God. And whether they, whether they, whether you say, hey, do, do you know the Lord as your Savior? You lay hands on them. That ain't what I'm talking about. But by you feeding them the word of God, by you living a life that's pleasing to God before them, by you staying holy and not, you know, being contaminated by what everybody else is doing, but you, you decide, I'm going to stand for Christ. Amen. I will not be contaminated by everything. Else. I will not be pepper. I'm salt. When you make that decision, again, people will recognize it. And so whether they come to you in the midst of your other friends or whether you just get a text, man, thank you for standing. Thank you for being who you are. Or whether they call you. Hey, man, I need, I need, man, I need to stay closer to you. Whatever it is. Everybody, everybody understand what I'm saying? Amen. That's how we kingdom build. We build for God's kingdom. Amen. Listen. When people are in the world. All of us was once there. If you come around in your current state and nobody stops cussing, 
stops drinking, or at least acknowledge that you did at least acknowledge that, oh man, that's that's so and so. <laughs> that's so and so. And so, you know, but if they just keep doing what they're doing when you, when you come around, that's a good indicator that either they ain't got no respect for you, which it, it could happen. They, they they may not have no respect for you. Or They, they they don't really see you holy. <laughs> they don't really see you righteous. They don't really see you that way. Listen, when people, if, if people are in the world and they still want you often to be a part, often to, to come around and be, they don't really see you. I'm telling you, when, when, when you when you start to live for Christ, your invitation should get smaller. Amen. From the world side. Your, 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 your invitation should, should decrease. Why? Because darkness don't like light. Amen. Amen. Darkness don't like light. Now, people may know when I say people, oh man, but you you cool though. You cool, you cool. Well, thank you. Thank you. But even for me, ain't but so much dark I can take. In other words, I'll be here, hey, listen, I'm coming through. I'm going to come through and holler at y'all. Hour, two hours, three hours. I'll holler. Hey, I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. I'm out. I, I, I can't take two. I can't take but two, but so much. That's just me now. I can't take but so much. But if I can't take but so much, what about them? And that's why I say the invitation list should, should probably should be getting a little bit, a little bit smaller. Amen. If listen, that's if we doing kingdom stuff now. We we ain't doing kingdom stuff. Amen. Uh, but if you still got five on it, then they probably gonna invite you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's five o'clock in the morning. Where you gonna be? Outside on the corner. Oh, that was a song that was bumping when I came to Christ. That, that's the kind of stuff that I was listening to before I came to Christ. Amen. I still remember. Amen. Amen. Return of the Mac. Amen. Was 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 bumping. That was, that was like 95, 96, you know, but I came to Christ in 97. But them, them just the songs I was listening to. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But again, kingdom building. We almost finished. Determined not to be a mere social club. We don't want to be a social club. We don't, we don't want this ministry to be a social club. Listen, what you'll find is some, 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 some ministries, amen, they got something going on every night of the week. Something. They, uh, it, it, uh, if not, they might take one day off. But always something, 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 something going on. And again, but, but, and again some, some of the stuff may be very productive. Could very well be. But there are there's some other stuff, amen. Is is just to act like we're busy. Just to act like, hey, listen, we being social with each other. And so what I would tell you is a bowling club. What do what, what, what y'all think bowling clubs do? Bowl. A golf club, what they do? Golf. And so that's all they do. But we can't be no social club. And, and that's what they are. Golf club, they're social clubs. Bowling, that's a social club. We don't want this to be a social club. Or just a mere social club. It's not just about what we do inside of these walls. There's a life outside of here. And so, again, we want this to be bigger than that. More than that. Alright? Everybody understand? Alright? So again, determined not to be a mere social club, but pursuing that not one should be lost. But pursuing that not one should be lost. Because again, if we are part of a social club, we're only going to allow certain people to be part of our club. We're going to, uh, listen, if we're talking about golf, don't you come here talking about no bowling. <laughs> if you want to be part of a bowling social club, go down, you need to go to the bowling <laughs> And so, 
People can be lost. And so for us, we don't want to be no social club. Man. Whatever it is. And again, that's why we ask the question. What are your questions? What are your thoughts? What are your concerns? We want to hear from you because you're important to this ministry. You're important. And so we're not just a mere social club. You may ask a question that may have nothing to do with church. But the Bible says he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And so there may be some life stuff we need to address. Amen? Amen. And I'm telling you, even on last Sunday, and I'm just, I'm just going to go there. Last Sunday, I, I, I asked a question about a certain thing. And I really couldn't go in the way I wanted to. I just said, hey, you know, you're the parent. You, got to, you do what you do. But I'm telling you, I saw spiritually the effect. I saw it. I saw it. And all I can say, don't do it. Let it be. Amen? But again, what I'm trying to tell us is that we came to middle. This, this is not a mere social club. Amen? We don't want none to be lost. Every soul matters. Every soul matters. Every soul. Amen? Amen. Every soul matters. All right? Uh, listen to this. We admit and make ourselves vulnerable. We admit and make ourselves vulnerable. But listen to that. We have to make ourselves vulnerable. Make ourselves vulnerable. Vulnerable to what? For we believe in being led by the Spirit of God. And so we have to make ourselves vulnerable to the Spirit of God. Because if, if I'm not vulnerable to the Spirit, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do what I feel like is supposed to be done. I'm going to do what I think is right. But if I make myself vulnerable, I'm saying, God, I can't do this without you. If I, if without you, I'm just going to mess it up. So I need you to lead and guide me. I need you to instruct me. I need you to show me what, what, whatever I I needs to be done. Whatever needs to be done. Whichever, whatever, whatever way I need to go. I need you to show me. And so I'm going to make myself vulnerable. Why? For we believe in being led by the Spirit of God, which rarely, if ever, agrees with the flesh. And, th and that's my point. The flesh, we want to do what the flesh want to do. Oh, you said that? Well, I'm going to say this. But if I'm led of the Spirit, it can be like they said that, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not returning that. I'm not, I'm not giving that back. I'm not gonna give you, as they say, I'm not gonna give you the energy you give me. <laughs> Amen. But that's when you led of the Spirit. That's when you led of the Spirit. Amen. So when you make yourself vulnerable, you can know some stuff. Amen. You can know some stuff. You know the Spirit is already showing you, but if you know it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna, it ain't going nowhere, it ain't gonna hit its target. Shut it up. Shut it down. Amen. Unless the Lord say, tell them anyway. <laughs> if they tell them anyway, then you tell them anyway. And let them do what they do. Amen. And so, um, we make ourselves vulnerable. For we believe in being led by the Spirit of God, which rarely, if ever, agrees with the flesh. Amen. The flesh like what it like. Yeah. And so, even when we be searching, listen. People will search through the scripture and be like, well, the Bible say this, but, you, but, but, they, but what they're looking for is to, is to agree with how they feel. <laughs> look, I, I'm just trying to prove a point. I'm just trying to show you, this is how I feel. This is what I think. But no. Make yourself vulnerable. Amen. In other words, it ain't always agree with your flesh. It say we take extra precaution. And so there's a need to take it. To take extra precaution. To take extra precaution. For what? That we never get too big to serve someone else. And this is important because it's, it's, it's to help us understand that we're supposed to be helpers one to another. Amen. And so, if, and so I have to take extra precaution that I don't get too big. Amen. To serve someone else. Because if I get too big, then I'm saying, I ain't clean no toilets. I'm the apostle. <laughs> I'm the so-and-so. I ain't doing this. I ain't doing... That means you, I don't got too big. I don't got too big. And so, again, if I see it, I believe you can see it. Make sense? Amen. All right. Amen. So we don't want to get... We, we want to take extra, not just precaution, but extra precaution that we never get too big to serve someone else. Amen. Or forget to love them regardless of the circumstances. 
And so we don't, we don't want to get too big that, hey, this is my gift, this is my talent, this is all I'm going to do. Well, I'm not doing that. Well, that's, that's too nasty. Well, dog, well, so-and-so can do that. No, we're, we're helpers one to another. Amen. We don't want, we don't, 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 don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Amen. Don't, 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 don't get, don't get so big. Don't, don't get so, so, so high and so mighty. Amen. That you, that, that you, that you can't even come back down. We are brothers. Amen. Absolutely. And so again, this is our, um, this is our vision. Amen. This, this, this is where we at, uh, as a ministry, these are some things that, that we that, that we, we focus on, and I believe um, for all practical purposes, I believe that 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 God has blessed us tremendously, amen, that we are indeed fulfilling the vision, amen. Do we need some work? Absolutely. Is there some areas we need to get better in? Absolutely, yeah. amen. But this is the vision of the house, and so again, that's why I, I, you, you've heard me say it time and time again. Um, some people or, you know, church people would really struggle, amen, with, with this, with this type of, 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 of ministry, amen. Um, but that's why he didn't call us to be a church, amen. We're here to do ministry, amen. We're saying, hey, bring your ministry, whatever that is, let's walk this thing together, let's learn together, let's, let's be who Christ has called us to be, amen. And let's make an impact, not only in here, but outside. But the only way we're going to do that is if we have a change. Let's say, as, 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 the, as the songwriter said, something on the inside, <laughs> working on the outside, that brought about a change in my life. And so there's something that's, work, that's, that's, that's working on the inside of here, on the inside, amen, that, that, that should be causing us to go outside, amen, that works on the outside. Hallelujah. And so, again, so we, we, we should be, be able to be a help to others. Amen. We should be able to be like, like, like bait, like lures for God. If, you, if we were a fisherman, God should be able to use us for bait. Amen. And say, go, 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 go out there and get, go, go get me that big one, boy. Go get me that big one. Let me, let me, let me, let me toss you on out there. Amen. And so we should, we should be the bait that he can use because he, he's coached us up. He know, he, he know what his what fish like to eat. Amen. And, 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 and such, he said, I'll make you fishers of men. Amen. Everybody with me? Amen. amen. And so we bless God, amen, for, 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 for this. Amen. I know that this was a message uh, really for the house, uh, but we shared it, amen, via, via, via uh, Facebook, amen, and, and, and uh, YouTube. But the object of all of this is that we fulfill the vision. Until next time, God bless you. Peace.